The most recent Fox News poll shows Republican businessman Glenn Youngkin as the front runner in this race with 53 percent of the vote and Democrat Terry McAuliffe with 45 percent. Joining me right now is the leader of the GOP, he is California Congressman and House Minority and Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. Uh, Congressman, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. I want to get your Thanks take on, 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 on this yeah. race in, in Virginia. As we do that, here's what Kamala Harris said about this race when she campaigned for Terry McAuliffe last week in Virginia. Watch this. It's a close election, and it is a bellwether for what happens in the rest of the country. You know, the last time I was standing with Terry, um, I saw a bunch of signs, and they said, don't Texas Virginia. <laughs> right? Let's not Texas Virginia. Because you see, what happens in Virginia will in large part determine what happens in 2022, 2024, and on. Leader McCarthy, your reaction to that? If Youngkin wins today, what kind of an impact might you expect on the midterms? Well, the one thing I would say, there's no greater contrast than these two politicians. I mean, when you look at Terry McAuliffe, He's only been listening to politicians when he got Glenn Young and never ran before, is only listening to the parents. And you have Youngkin giving an optimistic vision for the future, and Terry's just running a negative campaign, not talking about any issues. It is eye-opening, because remember, President Biden won this state by 10 points. This race shouldn't even be close. With this race being close, it really has been a bellwether for what's happened in Congress in the future. You can go all the way back to 93 when a Republican won, then Republicans won Congress. You look at um, 2005 when the Democrat won, Democrats won Congress. 2009 when a Republican won, Republicans won Congress. So it's really, a, and this state has moved more blue than before. So I've got to give Glenn Youngkin all the credit in the world. This is a guy who's not run for office before. He's not bringing politicians in. He's only been listening to the people. He's talking about reforming the DMV, reforming education. The parents do have a say inside their children's education. You'll find even in Congress, we're going to write a parent's bill of rights. So parents can know what curriculum being taught to their children. So, so, Congressman, you've been listening to voters. I know you've been traveling a lot. You have been raising a record amount of money for the GOP. What are you hearing and what do you want to say are the priorities for the GOP today? Well, I'll tell you, what I'm hearing across the country is frustration. It's not just Republican and Democrats, and you see it time and again. And the real question is, they ask, when will the Democrats understand the policies they are pushing, the policies they are implementing, is hurting America? And you see it every day. We even now find it in NBC in their polling, where 71 percent of America believes we're on the wrong track. You find it with inflation, the top issues people are concerned about, rising prices, and what does the White House tell you? Inflation is only about wealthy people problem. And we should expect less for Christmas. Then you look at what's happening on our border, and you have covered this day in and day out, Maria, before others would. Now that you've got an administration that wants to provide $450,000 of hard-earned taxpayer money to someone who came here illegally, then you watch crime in our major cities based upon the democratic policy of cutting our police. You're watching there in New York where fire stations are being closed. It, it really comes to what the policy of this administration has done. And now we, we're on the brink of being energy independent, but with the Biden administration shutting down American jobs, but letting Putin have a new pipeline and asking OPEC to produce more, but not America, when our energy production, even on our natural gas, is 42 percent cleaner than Russia's? This is just backwards, and I'm thinking maybe Virginia will finally wake up the Democrats to say they should not vote for what this reconciliation, trillions of dollars, will only put them down the path of further destruction for this nation. Yeah, let me ask you about that and all of this spending negotiations going on behind the scenes. I know you've been doing a series of roundtables uh, on uh, zeroing in on, on the reconciliation bill. But this week we see Senator Joe Manchin with a scathing statement for progressive Democrats over the reconciliation package. Here's Manchin yesterday. Watch. I will not support the reconciliation legislation without knowing how the bill will impact our debt and our economy and our country. And I am urging 
all of my colleagues in the House to vote and pass the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Holding that bill hostage is not going to work to get my support of what you want. And then there was Congresswoman Cori Bush. She wasn't happy with what Manchin had to say. She put out a statement afterwards saying, Senator Manchin's opposition to the Build Back Better Act is anti-black, anti-child, anti-woman, and anti-immigrant. I'm not sure how she gets there, Congressman, but what, do you, what can you tell us about whether or not either of these bills come for a vote this week? You know... They promised it for the last two months. I mean, it's kind of like Nancy Pelosi is Lucy with the football and Charlie Brown. She keeps bringing President Biden up here and just to pull the football out from under him. Um, I don't know if they can vote on it again, but it, why is it controversial that a member of Congress is asking to know what's in the bill and how much does it cost before they vote on it? That's what they're attacking Joe Manchin over which to me is really the right thing to do. They want to produce this bill, and we inside Washington call it scoring, meaning what does it cost? These are trillions of dollars which will transform this government into a more socialist wing of a government. And people should know what effects that would have on the American public. The American public should have a right to know what it costs and what it would do. The Democrats don't want to allow that to happen. Pelosi, remember her famous line, you have to pass the bill to know what's in it. That's why we've been doing these roundtables. And today at 2.30 on Instagram Live, if you go to Rep. Kevin McCarthy, I'll have Chef Andrew uh, Gruel on there talking about small business, the effects and the punishment it does to small businesses. We talked about energy before. We talked about the challenges of what this bill is doing when it gives 10 million illegal immigrants, gives them amnesty. Or you talk about the 87,000 IRS agents. Remember, that's the largest revenue to pay for this bill. And it goes after and targets the majority of Americans. Because if you make $28 a day or spend $28 a day, you're a target. And this is where they want to gain money from. Yeah, I noticed that in the latest version, uh, Biden said he wasn't going to put the bank surveillance in there. However, there still is the $80 billion for the 87,000 new auditors at the IRS. So is that just a trick that he's saying it's not in there, but he still wants to hire 87,000 auditors to do that kind of surveillance? Yes, it's still in there. It is the largest gather of revenue to pay for this bill. They cannot remove it. They only produce more of it. And think of the premise of what they're talking about. They think Americans all cheat on their taxes, so they're going to bring 87,000 new IRS agents. That's a larger population than Scranton, Pennsylvania, the hometown of the president. To go after, and it's not going after the wealthy of America, it's going after everybody almost in America. If you spend $28 a day, you just fill up your gas tank, you buy a coffee or go to lunch, they're going to target you. Why? Why don't we look at ways that well, we can improve why? America instead of going after Americans? But, Congressman, how does he get away with coming out, going to a podium, and saying that this costs zero? I don't understand why the president keeps saying that this doesn't cost any money and that it's paid for when we know that it's not paid for and it hasn't even been scored. Maya McGinnis at the Committee for a Responsible Budget says without an independent score, how will we really ever know uh, what this framework costs? Joe Manchin yesterday said it costs double the $1.8 trillion that the president says. Maybe that's why we keep seeing these polls. Look at this recent Marist national poll finding 44 percent of Democrats and Democrat leaders Meaning independents want a candidate other than Biden to run in 2024. What do you think these numbers mean? And who is on the bench, uh, if not Biden, to run in 2024? You raise a good, very good point. Why does the president say there are no more Americans in Afghanistan? Why did he say that was the best way to remove from Afghanistan? Why does he tell the American public the economy is in a strong position or that we should expect less from Washington? Why does he continue to lie to us in this process? I think Americans are seeing through this. Even the Democratic Party is, uh, is running against this president now. They think he's weak on leadership. They've watched his policies have failed. They're, they're not standing with him. So it's, it's interesting to me, why would this Democratic Congress actually vote for this bill that would only create more inflation, harm our economy going forward, and actually the only people it's going to help is a China economy?
And when I look at where this president is continuing to move, I don't know if they can put these votes together because I'm seeing more Democrats announce retirement. You've got committee chairs are announcing. 15% of the Democrats on appropriation have announced retirement. They don't want to sit around either because they see the future is not bright based upon the policies they're pushing. I don't know what Democrat will be running um, three years from now, but I do know we're 371 days and seven hours away from changing the course of history, of flipping the House to prioritizing this economy, prioritizing parents and the education of their children, prioritizing a secure border, and making America products actually in America and shipping to other countries instead of having a backload of the supply chain that's controlled by China and asking OPEC to producing oil, that will never happen again. Wow, really good points. And uh, we're, we're, we're counting. <laughs> you just counted the days and hours. That is funny. Uh, Leader McCarthy, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining me this morning.